Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Norb Cam. What's up? What's up, everybody? How's it going? Thanks for watching. So I'm looking forward to this collab. As much as I can say, I'm looking forward to associating with a 49er fan. But for you, CG, I'll make the exception. So <laughs> thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Where they can find you, man. Uh, right there, you see my name, Norbcam. Uh, pretty much, that's my that's my name for everything on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter. It's all Norbcam, N O R B C A M. So, yeah, if you want to just check out anything Seahawks entertainment news, things like that, uh, that's the place to go, man. Okay, man. So, as far as you've been like the biggest uh, Seahawks fan that I've heard of, I mean, you've got like the biggest uh, followers, man. Like you stand above the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Maybe one day I'm going to be one of the best on my own fan base. But it all seriously, man, what's the update with the Seah uh, Seahawks news? That's kind of... You know, I think that's what all of us are wondering. Uh, so far, you know, normally preseason is kind of a chance to sneak peek behind the curtain and see what our teams are looking like. But so far... You know, I, I watched the first game on TV, Was went to that second game against the Broncos last weekend in person, first time being in the stadium in over a year and a half, and uh, which was a blast, except the game kind of sucked because we lost 30 to 3. But, I'm, you know, a lot of people are already kind of, oh, man, our team is this. Oh, man, I so don't know about it. We keep Pete Carroll, blah, blah, blah. I was like, wait, you, know, you realize we haven't played hardly any starters in this in this first two games it's been really like watching you know third and fourth stringers with a few exceptions of some you know guys being put in there so i haven't seen the first string offense i haven't seen the first string defense the only first stringers i've seen is you know our punter and our kicker you know and a couple of guys maybe on the defensive line and uh you know some rotational guys but it's too hard to really gauge as to you know with shane waldron the new coordinator that we got from the rams uh we're all excited to see what that's going to look like you know because he's you know this was supposed to be a transformative thing and so far i'm watching going well, i haven't really seen anything transform yet our offense has barely scored any points but there's no Russell Wilson. There's no DK Metcalf. There's no Tyler Lockett. There's no Chris Carson. There's no, you know, uh, Gerald Everett. So we're not even seeing any weapons. So what do you expect, you know, out of that, you know, expect it to be. So I, at this point, I'm still cautiously optimistic that, you know, we just haven't, we haven't, we just barely seen a sneak peek of what's to come, but the full meal deal hasn't been unveiled yet. So I'm hoping obviously like everybody else's teams that are just, you know, trying to make their way through the preseason that their real team will show up in game one, you know, week one, game one, and that we'll see the real team and that there'll be something, you know, special and nothing like we've seen so far. It's been pretty ugly, to be honest with you. But I keep telling myself it's preseason. It's preseason. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's kind of where we're at, you know? Yeah, like your like your boy Sam Dog said, it's the eye test, man. So we got to see who shows out. But, um, yeah, mostly it's yeah. mostly been a lot of the backups, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? What I have found interesting, or what I'm at least trying to you know gauge from all this is, you know, you you are watching some of these guys who you know are going to be playing some snaps. They're going to be, uh, you know, potentially starting, competing for starting jobs. Definitely, you know, uh, depth you know, guys and stuff like that. I'm really more interested in. And I've been trying to watch some of these key guys on defense, uh, particularly some names that jump out that I've had my eye on, like uh, Alton, Alton Robinson on the defensive end, um, uh, Daryl Taylor. Uh, Daryl Taylor was the uh, defensive end slash hybrid linebacker who didn't play at all last year and was a second round pick. So everyone's been anticipating. Can't wait to see Taylor on the field, Taylor on the field, Taylor on the field. Well, we're seeing Taylor on the field. And I'm still waiting for that moment for me to go, there he is. That's the guy we drafted. That's what we were looking for. I'm still waiting for that. You know, I'm sold. Here he is. So I, 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 I've, I've been wishing to get more out of him in, during the preseason. But I haven't really seen it yet. Allen Robinson's definitely been all over the place doing, you know, things that I would expect him to do. So he's, he's definitely been showing up. But, yeah, Daryl Taylor is probably the one I'm most – I guess, intrigued or concerned about just because the expectations are pretty high of what he's going to do for the defensive line. Now, granted, uh, one of the big things that, you know, as you probably know, when you don't have all the starters in, it's not just that you put one person and that guy makes plays by himself. It's a whole cohesive thing, right? Because you got everybody working together. And sometimes uh, I think of Carlos Dunlap, who we picked up from the Bengals last year. When, when Dunlap came in, all of a sudden, the rest of the defensive line became more productive. Jerron Reed started getting sacks. Uh, it's just like they had to focus so much on one player that it opened it up for other defensive linemen. I'm hoping the same thing here that Dale Taylor, once we have Carlos Dunlap and the rest of the starters in there, 
then he might have more ability to shine. Because right now he's kind of like lost in the wash with a bunch of other guys who are not starters and things like that. So, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at as far as, far as you know, uh, hoping that once again, it's not just that you'll have better players next to you, but that those other players will actually make you better. You know, and, and Carlos Dunlap's one of those players who does that. So, you know, we'll see. I, maybe this Sunday or this Saturday night, uh, I'll be at the second game at home uh, when they when we play the Chargers, and you know, word is that we're going to see a few more starters in this game. So the eye test might be a little bit more revealing of what what there is to see um, once. Yeah, you know, we get a little few more starters. I mean, they have to. We only we have only three preseason games this year, as you know. So without the fourth one, normally the third game is always the dress rehearsal for the first regular season game. And the fact that this is game number three, I would think that this would be the time that if they're going to play starters. This would be the time to do it. But I'm kind of glad they haven't yet, to be honest with you. As much as the product has kind of stunk on the field, because in two games we lost. Our backup quarterback, Geno Smith, took concussion because of a very bad missed block uh, by the left tackle. And then we lost two guys for the rest of the season, season-ending injuries, knee injuries. Uh, ben Burkirvin, a backup linebacker and special teams guy, and uh, John Rasua, who was a uh, – uh, a guy I was really rooting for to try to make his way onto the, you know, maybe like the fourth receiver or fifth spot on the, the uh, wide receiver death chart. And he lost, he, he ended up suffering a, an ACL tear and he's gone for the season. So when I think about that, I'm thinking I'd rather see a crappy product the first two games and not lose starters than to have Tyler Lockett out there or Russell Wilson and suddenly him get a concussion on a bad play on a missed block or a, or, or a freakish, you know, injury to happen to Tyler Lockett in a game that doesn't matter. So for that, I will be happy to just watch crappy football for the <laughs> during preseason. If it'll save the guys for the games that matter, because right. I mean, there's nothing worse than losing the guy for the season, you know, in a, in a pointless game, an exhibition game, basically, or, you know, in some workout or something where it's like, man, this guy never got started. In fact, you, you guys have had a few energy injuries of your own, right? This year. Yeah. I mean, we it, had, worst thing. we had, yeah. Tavares Moore was like our backup safety, but he was a guy that can contribute. He was out for the season. Justin school was supposedly like our swing tackle out for the season. Uh, Chikoski Tart just recently just got off the pup list. So he should be in, he should be good to go. Um, uh, the injury that's more concerning is the fact that we're still holding on to Jalen Hurd, just like how we had high potential with this kid, but he just hasn't really like played on the field since that Cowboys preseason game. So I'm really more intrigued with the other receivers. I like what I see out of Trent Sherfield. This guy looks like he can be the number three receiver. Then you got somebody like a Jaquan Jennings, who's supposed to be what Jalen Hurd's supposed to be, a physical, after the catch, a blocking type of receiver that I like. I mean, kind of reminds me a little bit of an Anquan Bolden, just a little bit with that ch blue chip on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, yeah, we're mostly just – I just want to see what Trey Lance could do. Maybe there's a good chance he might just pull a Russell Wilson and maybe we get rid of Jimmy. Who knows? What do you want to see? Yeah, because I, I obviously been eyeing the uh, the view from a distance and wondering who's going to be going to be Jimmy G. Or are they going to put the rookie in there? What do you, what what do Forty Nineers fans want? Are they I, do they still think Garoppolo is the answer, or are they kind of looking to turn to turn the page? What do you what's your feeling on it? I'm hearing that they, a lot of them are just turning the page. They just want to see Trey Lance play. They they really getting tired of Jimmy. That's what it seems like. But in, realistically, I think at this point you have to play Jimmy because of the fact that this guy needs to learn a lot more from a veteran. But everybody wants Trey to play, of course. Yeah. But well, as a Seahawks fan, I'm hoping you guys will stick with Jimmy G for a long time because <laughs> for me, I know what we're getting out of Jimmy G. No, no offense, but you can take the offense if you want. But you know. Uh, he's he's had moments for sure. And I know he got you guys to the Super Bowl, but you know, I think in the moment that that really mattered, we all know that he had that moment to win that game and 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 over you know overthrew a wide open receiver that would have potentially changed the course of Super Bowl history in that game. But uh, fortunately for us Seahawks, Seahawks fans, it didn't happen. But um, you know, so that's interesting. You know, as far as uh, the, the quarterback controversy, you know, where things are going to land. But I agree with you. It seems to me that it, the smart the smart move would be to start with Jimmy G, knowing that. Um, the backup is just going to be waiting for his opportunity, but you never know. Could be like the Russell Wilson thing, man. They pulled the plug, you know, way back in 2012 and gave him the reins and said, man, you earned it. You earned it this preseason. And uh, without a doubt, it was the best move they ever made, even though they already committed like 
13 or 15 million dollars whatever it is to uh what's his face i already forgot his name matt flynn, <laughs> matt, flynn matt flynn thank you so uh but like, where's matt flynn today i don't i don't even know what he's doing he got out of the league like he got took his money and ran I mean, the dude's not even playing football so he was like Probably i'm out. right there <laughs> so uh you know? So talking about what's happened lately with the Seattle Seahawks, I mean, you guys just cut Alden Smith for the off the field issues, man. Like I was just like, I think like months ago I was making a video about how you guys signed him. And I guess I had like a lot of heat off of your fan base a little bit. I was just little, I was just riling up a little bit on the Seattle react, <laughs> but in all seriously, man, I thought he would have been a good rotational guy for you, but I guess his off the field has been hurting him a little bit. What do you feel? Well, the, you know, the, yeah, I, I think a lot of us felt the same way because up to that point, he had, he was having a good camp. He had, uh, you know, it looked like he was strong, came in good shape. Uh, he was having just really good practices and reviews of how his performances were. It was just, it, it looked really solid. And that something happened. It was, I don't think it was even related to the court case per se. There's something about, he did something that apparently violated the trust that they'd established that he has some conditions that, they, that said, if you're going to play, you're going to have to stay between these lines. And apparently whatever he did, he didn't, he didn't stay between the lines and cross the lines. And it was enough where they said, it's not going to, you know, not, not going to happen. So yeah, I was really hopeful for that. I mean, it's weird, man. It's just like uh, back in the day, if you said back in 2012, 2013, that Alden Smith would be a Seahawk and Richard Sherman would be a 49er. Uh, and now he's next 49er at this point. But, you know, I'd be yeah. like, are you out of your freaking mind? But that's the way the world, the NFL yeah. world goes. But yeah, so yeah, weird, man. A lot of weird off the, you know, speaking of both those players, both of them having, you know, not exactly the best of, you know, off the field situations, you know, both still to yet be resolved. So we'll see if both those guys end up landing somewhere. There's still talk about people saying, you know, they'd love to see Richard Sherman come back here, but I know he's still got his case to get worked out and I'm not sure where he's going to, you know, end up when all is said and done. But yeah, it's too bad, man. It's like these guys are, I know they're past their prime and they're kind of on the twilight of their career, but I still think they both got, you know, game left in them. But you know, unfortunately, these off the field things are kind of hampering that last chance to try to, you know, wrap up their career with a couple, you know, a couple more seasons or something. So, so uh, we'll see. Yeah. Like, I don't think no other NFL team is going to even consider signing Sherman with this incident. And as far as Alden Smith, it's been proven that this guy cannot even stay out of trouble. Even when we thought when he went to the Cowboys, we thought, hey, maybe this guy's a changed person. Not the case. It's been a lot of incidents with this guy. I was very high on this guy when he was on our team, but the off the field, it, it's just never changed. This guy's never mature. And the thing about Seattle is you guys like to take a lot of our our cast offs a little bit. I just don't get it. like what's intriguing. Like, okay, give me some some intriguing scoops of why Seattle does it and, and how how's that work out? I, I think there's something about Pete Carroll tends to be a guy who tends to I think he he feels like he can take guys who are, you know, a little bit with not the cleanest of records and he can kind of clean them up. I think there's a there's a definitely a culture here in Seattle where players are allowed to be individuals. They can kind of be themselves you know it's not like the belichick thing where you rule with an iron fist you know pete carroll's a definitely a player's coach and he lets uh lets guys kind of have their own identity and for i am for a lot of them i think uh you know there's a lot of players who have come through here and you know they might have had some spotty issues but you know have, have gone on to have no problem like frank clark frank clark you know he had a little bit of domestic stuff in his college history and a lot of teams weren't going to look at him and came to seattle and Never heard a peep from him. You know, he was just a player. You know, the only, the only time he was beating anybody up was on the field. And then when it came time to, you know, contract extension time, you know, he earned so much because he got a ton of sacks and ended up getting that great deal out of Kansas City. And here he is with a Super Bowl ring and, you know, on a pretty on a pretty good team that almost, you know, could have pulled the, the, the double. But so that's just another, one example of a guy who, you know, had all the spotty history. They gave him a chance and turned out to be, uh, you know, a great fit. So... You know, but at the same time, I think there's also players who, you know, like when they were, you know, we talk about Sherman, you know, but bring up like uh, Earl Thomas, Brandon Browner, that was those, that was the LOB, right? Those are the guys who, you know, you know, back in the, the heyday of the 49ers Seahawks rivalry, that was the that was the secondary that you know came up with that name, and those guys were amazing, you know, being on the uh, uh, you know, for a time when they were all together, but and really we never heard any issues other than. 
Sherman's mouth. You know, that was the only time yeah. we heard anything. But once they left Seattle, Brandon Browner, you know, went to pres- prison for a long time for some some issue. Earl Thomas, once he went to the Ravens, you know, he had that whole issue with his wife and his brother and that stuff. And now he's not with any team. They got he got cut from them. And then Sherman's issue, you know, um, very, fairly recently. But you know, these are all three three guys who all play together. We're all under Pete Carroll in the same system, same team and during all that time nothing ever you never heard anything about these guys off the field and then all of them all three of them once they left seattle they've each had their own cases now whether that's you know whether that's just coincidence or something to do with the culture that they had in seattle but you know they didn't have those problems when they were with the with the team so what is that something Pete carroll and the organization does you know i don't know but it does seem like if there's gonna if anybody's gonna give somebody a chance who's maybe had a little rough somewhere else you know, Pete Carroll tends to give him a shot if they think there's a chance it could work out. So, because in this case, it just didn't with Alden Smith. Yeah, that's just how some are. Um, okay, J. Moss was asking you this question: Were you upset when Sherman signed with the Niners? I was just because I mean I didn't put full blame on him because the reality was in Seattle. You know, it was one of those bad things, just like Earl Thomas, where his career with Seattle ended on an injury, which always sucks. You want it to be one of those things, especially with a, a player as great as he's been. You, you want it to be, you, know, you just never want to see him leave. You just want him to see him play here. You win a couple of Super Bowls, hopefully. And then at the end, you just kind of go, well, that was great. Let's all have a big group hug and send you off to the sunset. But the reality is it rarely works that way these days anymore, right? Usually at some point a contract thing happens or someone gets injured and they end up, you know, team can't use them anymore. So they go. And that's what happened to Earl Thomas. And that's what happened to Richard Sherman. They ended up on, you know, in a crumpled heap on the ground. And that's the last thing we have a memory of them in a uniform. Actually, we know Earl Thomas flipping off the sideline, but that came after the injury, but Richard Sherman tore his Achilles on that same field, by the way, Earl Thomas, a little, little, little fact for those guys who don't really aren't aware of it. Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, Richard Sherman, all three of their careers with Seattle ended in Arizona. Just, just saying. I hate Arizona. And Super Bowl 49 took place in Arizona, so I hate that place. Okay. Uh, that said, uh, yeah, was I pissed? I was I was thinking of all places, Richard Sherman. Did you have to go to the Niners? I understand you got released. They It wasn't like you didn't try to come back to Seattle. Clearly, it wasn't going to work out with the combination of the salary and the injury and all that stuff. But I was like, man, any team but the 49ers. But I understand out of Compton, he's, you know, he's got Bay Area, you know, or a uh, California connections, it kind of made sense. But of course, you never want to see your, you always feel like you take it personal when your team leaves to join your rival. It just feels like an extra kick on the balls, you know, <laughs> stab in yeah. the back. So yeah, I was not happy and I wasn't going to root for him uh, as long as he wore that uniform. But, you know, as far as what he did for Seattle, of course, I, I love the fact that everything he did for us, but it was weird, man. I was hard to, I, I'm not going to lie that it's like, man, seriously, 49ers Sherman, come on, man. Okay, here's a Cardinals fan, by the way. He's asking you a question. In your opinion, what's the biggest area of concern for the Seahawks? P.S. <laughs> Arizona, <laughs> said a yeah. Kiss my butt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what? Spent a lot of money. Actually, I was, I don't know if you know, I was down at Super Bowl 49. I went to Super Bowl 48 and watched that with my dad. And then I went again to, to 49 and watched that game in Glendale. And best time, actually, to be honest with you, up until. 30 seconds left in the game. It was the greatest time in the world. Had a great time with the, you know, all the fans. Great time in Arizona. Great time in the game. Awesome game. One of the best Super Bowls I had ever watched because it was back and forth, back and forth. It was just that last 30 seconds that ruined everything. However, um, back to the question. Uh, biggest area of concern. For me, it's um, it's the it's the defense. Uh, it's just we have a lot of guys, and we're seeing that right now, is a lot of guys who are – competing for jobs you know the cornerback position uh there's a lot of you know is it going to be with a spoon is it going to be dj reed um is it going to be the new guy trey brown is going to be um it, you know there's just so many things we haven't quite locked in we don't have that oh he's the lockdown sherman's got that spot and it's going to be blah 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 on the other side um and so the corner is a big question mark. It's been a big question mark after losing Shaquille Griffin last year. I was like, okay, who's going to step up and be that spot? And I don't know. There's to me, there's no clear, clear front runner right now. So waiting to see on that. And then uh, D line, same kind of deal. We have a lot of guys who were kind of hoping are going to rise up and be great this year. 
And until they start doing it, it's just a lot of wait and see kind of stuff. Like I said, Carlos Dunlap, I expect to be good, um, but we're going to need more than that. Daryl Taylor is a guy I'm counting on. Alton Robinson is a guy I'm counting on. Um, you know, Puna Ford. I mean, those guys are going to have to hold it down. But, you know, you know, you know at some point there's going to be injuries, so the depth is really going to be tested. And what I've seen so far from the preseason is not exactly inspiring a whole ton of reassurance that we've got everything solid. So the injuries is definitely a concern. We already have them, you know, on offensive line, there's injuries already. And then we have Dwayne Brown at left tackle. He's doing his hold in. So he hasn't played at all. He hasn't practiced at all. Not that I'm worried because the guy's 36 and the seasoned vet. But again, it seems like we never go through a season without talking about the offensive line. I think it should be better, but hopefully Dwayne Brown doesn't sit out. I don't think he will because I don't think he wants to miss out on $500,000 game checks a game. So he'll probably play, but I know he won't be happy because he doesn't have an extension right now. So so there's all that. Those are the, th- the, the trenches I'm concerned about and, and corner. Uh, I'm solid on safety. I love the Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs. Those guys are going to be great. Um, it's just the D-line, offensive line, and, uh, and corner. You know, that's really it. And I know that – and that's why – and tight end too. The, the injuries at tight end have really – uh, hampered, you know, you might, Seahawks fans know that they brought Luke Wilson back, you know, one of the few guys who was with the Super Bowl team, came back in, was here for a day, and then he retired. Apparently, he's been having some heart issues and decided it just this, that was enough, you know, he, he had enough. So they're still obviously looking for some some depth at tight end. And it's just, uh, you know, the injury thing is, is uh, already biting us in the butt right now. Uh, and the season hasn't even started yet. So, those are the concerns at this point. Yeah, yeah, I feel you there because we get that early in the season too. But um, I guess one of your fellow Seattle fans are asking about the Madden thing since you do Madden, right? I do. Oh, I see Tyler Parch. Oh, yeah, he's one of my uh, regular viewers on Discord and YouTube. Uh, yeah, we, I, I just picked up – probably won't show up right because it's on green screen. But, yeah, Madden 22 – I haven't even cracked the seal on it yet. So I've been doing a lot of Madden simulations. I only started playing this past year. I started playing Madden 21 back in October. Complete newbie. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. And then uh, I've come a long way. I'm, I'm definitely not no pro or anything like that, but I love playing it now. And so I can't wait to see what the, the Madden 22 looks like. But yeah, I, I do some uh, YouTube live uh, games where you know I played some uh some guys live on YouTube, some guys on my Discord, some random strangers, but I always bring people in on my Discord to help coach me up. That's how I've learned, man, actually, is I'll bring people in and they'll basically come in and say, hey, yeah, I want you to run this, you know, run the run the, run the uh, nickel with this, this, and this. And so I'm just like, okay, uh, that sounds good. And I've learned a ton by people just giving me, you know, online advice while playing the game. So a lot faster than if I just played on my own because I wouldn't have learned half this stuff, you know, that these guys have, who obviously know a lot better than I do. So power of the internet, baby, helping me become a better yeah. f- video game player. But yeah. I don't know. I might okay. do one later today, but I'm I'm right now in the in the in the heat of finishing my season 2021 season prediction music video, which I don't know if you've seen that. Have you seen those videos, CG? Um, I've checked out a couple. Like, okay, I have to like, send that oh. to you. I have to send it to you. Yeah. Every year, I uh, I make a music video. I usually make a few music videos every year, but uh, this is the big one that usually gets a lot of views. But I predict the, the whole song. season's record. Yeah, I do the whole records from one from game one to game seventeen, and each game has a song dedicated to it, about thirty seconds each, and it's basically a parody of a bunch of different songs from rap to to old school to uh, you know hip hop to to rock, and basically I tell the story of that game with the lyrics, and I predict the score, and at the end I put out what my prediction for the year of what their regular season record will be. So that's going to premiere on Sunday to uh, September 5th. So I'm in the heat of trying to get that sucker done. There's a lot of work and I'm way behind schedule. So I've got a week and not even a week and a half to finish this damn thing. So I've got a lot, a lot of stuff to do cramming to the last minute, but um, that's been taking up most of my time right now, but it's going to be good. I got some stuff I've never done before that I'm um, pretty excited to share with everybody. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of been my life the last few days. Yeah, so there's one, there's that Cardinal fan again. He's asking you, how do you feel about Seahawks committing to that Ethan Potek? I don't know how you say his name. Posick. Yeah, Ethan Posick, our center. He's never graded well from outside of perspective. It seems they'd want to upgrade. What don't we uh, understand about him? Um, Okay, so I think Ethan Posick 
I still think he could be solid for us. He's one of those guys that has just had injury bugs that have unfortunately plagued him uh, through mo- a lot of his career. I think he's had a lot of back issues. He actually did very well through most of the season last year. Unfortunately, this is at the end of the season, particularly against the Rams in that playoff game where he had probably one of the worst games of his career, and that really didn't help us. Um, but it's him and Kyle Fuller. Those, those guys are the ones kind of battling for the center position. Right now, Postig hasn't been playing because he has been banged up again. So right now, it seems like it's Kyle Fuller's job until Postig can get back on the field. But Postig's got much more uh, experience. He's been with the team for, I can't remember how many seasons now, but it's been a while. I think he started out at, at one of the other lineman positions and then eventually moved to center. But I think he's... I still like him. It's just if he can get off the injury bug and get healthy again, um, I feel like he really is the guy. If he can be like, like he was for most of the season last year, I like the dude. You know, and he's got rapport with Wilson, and that's a big thing. He knows the line calls, and, you know, I, I trust that if he's healthy, he's the guy to go to until he proves otherwise. Uh, definitely, I can understand that. Uh, so I guess this Rams fan's asking you a question. No disrespect, but will the Seahawks be able to protect Russell versus the Rams? No disrespect taken. That's always a big question because I know that uh, that that front four of the Rams is one of the the toughest in the league. Um, yeah, what I'm again, I think they're trying. They're using the fight fire with fire mentality. As you guys, as I'm sure Rams fan knows, we we basically took two of your coaching staff members and put them on our coaching staff. So I figure if you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. So I think the idea behind adopting some of, bit of that Ram style offense is to get the ball out of Russ's hands so that Aaron Donald won't have a chance to, to, you know, tear him up because he won't be trying to sit back there and, you know, and hold on to the ball too long. So uh, I think that's part of the, the goal is to, you know, just get the ball out quicker and not have to do, rely on pass protection. But I think the line is getting better. Uh, I say that, though, with the fact that the le- the left tackle position is in question because Dwayne Brown's – I assume he'll play, but then behind him, there's a lot of other banged-up guys. So, you know, we Dw- Dwayne Brown right now is the only real solid, healthy guy who is going to have to hold it down. That's why he's got a lot of leverage right now contract-wise because the other guys are not uh, really available. A lot of banged-up dudes who are uh, – we thought we were going to be deep in that position, but not deep at the moment. So – but yeah, that's. I think that's the plan. Get the ball out of Russ's hands before he gets sacked. Yeah. Plus, he's been holding on to the ball a little bit. There's been times where he had a little bit of time, and then he's been holding on to that ball a little too much. Um, I feel. I feel like Russell sometimes. I don't know if he's just not trusting in it, but it's like I think he wants to throw it. It's meant to be thrown, but then he doesn't. He just doesn't pull the trigger. So it's like, uh, nope. And then I'm gonna look around and I run around and do my thing, which of course has resulted in some of the most memorable plays. You know, on the in Seahawks offensive history on of those plays where Russell's scrambling around, making things up as he goes. But he's getting older. He's not as quick and fleet of foot as he used to be 10 years, like it was 10 years ago. This is 10th season now. So, you know, he's he's got to adopt, uh, adapt to the situation and what he's realistically able to do. He'll still run, but he may not be quite as squirrely and sneaky like he was, you know, when he first joined the team. So he's got to adopt, you know, adapt with the situation. So yeah, that's yeah. going to be key. Not that's holding on to the ball team. Yeah. That's the Russell Wilson. I hated to see, man, this guy had his way with us. He would run away from us. He would even torture our defensive party. This guy was something, but, uh, I guess for uh, Seahawks Eddie, he's asking, do you think Geno Atkins will sign with the Seahawks or something like that? Uh, yeah, I, I know that he's had a visit, and it sounds like there's mutual interest. I'm surprised I haven't heard anything more from that side of things because this has been a couple of days now that that visit happened. So I don't know if they're what's the holdup, if there's something, a reason why he's not doing it. Are they trying to get – you know, is there a talk on contracts or something like that? But uh, it'd be a pretty cool, it would be a pretty cool addition again because I think that's one of the concerns is the you know defensive line depth. So it'd be great to have somebody like Atkins in there, someone who, who's proven and solid and playing next to his old teammate would be pretty awesome. So not sure yet. Waiting for an update to see what's the holdup. You know, so that'd be a great. Uh, I'd love to see it happen. Yeah, and then you reunite with what Carlos Dunlap, who they've done well in Cincinnati, so that would be a good combination, but then it would be bad for all of us. So uh, I guess this guy's asking another <laughs> offensive line of question again, but he's asking about for your perspective overall, like this is what the Cardinals fans asking. He's the professor, according to what I'm hearing. Is this the, the question you have up here about the Seahawks online historically grading poorly? Yeah. 
How much of this do you think is do you think is attributed to Russ making the job harder for them versus actual limits in talent? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. There are definitely some sacks that are on Russell for you know not getting rid of the ball when he should and trying to do too much. But there are some times when it's just like uh, a traffic cone where somebody just runs right by somebody and uh, you know and gets in the backfield before Wilson even finishes his, his drop back. So. Uh, I think typically, generally, Seattle's offensive line has always been more of a running running team. You know, they they, they like they're good at uh, run blocking, but not necessarily great at pass protection. It kind of goes with Pete Carroll's philosophy because he's a run first guy, tends to want to run more uh, more than pass. So he's going to always look for you know offensive linemen who can uh, who can run block, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily good at pass protection. Uh, Jermaine Fetty is a perfect example of a guy. He, he should have been moved to guard. He kept at right tackle way too long, and eventually he got released. And I think he is playing guard now. Was it with Chicago or something? I, I can't remember where he went to. I, I feel like it's that's the team he went to. But he was terrible at pass protection. He just had bad feet. He couldn't move his feet. And so um, that's one of those guys where he was a big dude. I think he was great on run blocking, but just could not protect anybody to save his life. And that's why he got so many holding calls because good guys run right by him. You have to grab him, you know? So um, that was a bad miss, or at least I didn't use him properly. But, you know, I think that's a lot of the reason why they, they grade negatively on that regard. So a lot of sacks, some of them on the line, but Russell definitely has accounted for some of those as well. Oh, okay, man. So there's another, there's like an interesting question, but I know you're probably going to be, I don't know if you would be realistic on this one, but do you think that <laughs> who's better, Fred Warner or Bobby Wagner? All right, so that's a tricky question because uh, if B Wags is listening, of course I'm going to say Bobby Wagner is the best, the better linebacker of the two. Um, I think the uh, here's how I'll answer that question. Uh, Fred is a l- younger linebacker. He's only been in the league for how many years? Three? Is it three seasons? Uh, four seasons. Four seasons. Okay, Bobby Wagner has been here since since you know, the Russell era. So he's been here for a longer time. Of course, at a certain point, you're not going to be just like Russell. He's not going to be as fast and mobile as he was when he first came out. And I think Bobby Wagner has definitely lost a step, but he's also smarter upstairs. So what he loses in physicality, he has better, you know, reaction and anticipation of things. Um, I would say overall career wise, I'd say Bobby Wagner is the better linebacker. I'd say at this given moment, Fred Warren, you know, might have a step on him. He's really good. I'm not going to deny it. he's been a pain in our ass for sure. So, um, no. So he's definitely a guy I'm always concerned about on that uh, on that defense. And yeah, he's a he's a definitely a concern. But I think if between the two, probably right now, if like if you had to just build a team and you'd said, okay, here's your middle linebacker, you could take Bobby Wagner, or Fred Warner. Which one would you take? They might have to make a uh, they might have to make an argument that you know. Moving forward, Fred Warner is that probably got more, you know, more on the tank at this point. But career wise, Bobby Wagner definitely has has, uh, has had the better career so far. Yeah. How's that, that, how's that for a politically correct yeah, that, answer? That's a good answer. Uh, here's another <laughs> answer from this Rams fan. He wants to know how you feel about Stafford with the Rams when we work out. So I, I'm going to talk about that in my music prediction video. So I'm not going to reveal too much, but. Uh, I'll say this much. I think he's an upgrade from Jared Goff. I never thought Jared Goff was a very good quarterback. And, you know, the fact that they paid him all that money and then eventually released him not more than two seasons later shows that they they made a mistake. Now, as they're betting a lot on Matt Stafford here to kind of be the, sal- the, the savior here. He's definitely better. The question is how much better. And I think there's a lot of people who put the, well, he was with Detroit, so that's why he's not done better. Uh, label on him like he's this great quarterback who's been you know shackled by the Detroit Lions organization but I still say that you know there was a time he had Megatron as his receiver right one of the greatest receivers of all time and what did they do during that time you know I granted that's only two guys one side of the ball I understand all that but you know and he had the yards and all that stuff but you know but can he win the games you know um I, I I believe there can be a little bit too much put on a player to be the, well, he's really great. He just played with the wrong team thing. And I think this could be an example of that. Definitely better than Goff, but as great as what I think people are saying he's going to be, I'm not necessarily going to go as high as that. 
Okay, so here's another interesting question. How did the Legion of Boom fail? Which which you kind of like answered that one or you think a little different? I, I a little bit answered that. Really, it's it's like what, what ends everybody's great career? It's father time, man. Father time gets the best of everybody eventually. And it was kind of that, th- that same thing I mentioned. They, three of the, the uh, Legion of Boom members, Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, and Richard Sherman, all their careers ended <laughs> on injuries with the Seahawks and all in the same field, as I mentioned before. Aaron. So Arizona. So, you know, eventually age leads to bodies breaking down. You can't, you know, you can't play that pace forever. Eventually something's going to give. In this case, it was just unfortunate. Their injuries almost all happened within like one season of each other. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, it's like I said, you all, you, you always want it to be this magical, happy walk to this, to this sunset when the careers come to an end, but usually it's not that right. It's usually something that ends much more abruptly and, and unexpected. And it's amazing. You know, when it comes to, I think, uh, when it comes to positions in, in football, the, the ones that drop off the quickest running backs, right? As soon as they hit 30, it's like the, the meter's running. And it's suddenly they just go from doing great, doing great 30 off a cliff. With the exception is Adrian Peterson. I don't know what that dude's. He's like not human. But um, Frank, or Frank, Gore, Gore, Frank, Frank Gore, Frank Gore, Frank Gore, Frank Gore. He's even more in, uh, uh, amazing that that dude's playing. Isn't this son already playing? Like on the college, football, like college that. level, that's, that's crazy. crazy. This dude, we got a college kid playing football, and he's still in the NFL. That is insane to me. So you guys got the you guys you guys got the bulk of the mileage from Frank Gore, and believe me, that was not fun times having to see that dude tear us apart. Um, but it's hard to believe that guy's still productive at this age. Those two guys stand out as exceptions to the rule. But most of the time, um, running backs, and then uh, you know. Uh, secondary cornerbacks and wide receivers. I mean, that's you know, probably more on the defense because they got to react more. So running backs and cornerbacks, those are the first ones that usually go quick. And the LOB is that same thing. It's like they're doing great, doing great, doing great. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. injuries got them. So, yeah, I guess huge shout-out to your boy Sam Dog. I guess he was talking about how we're long overdue on the collaboration. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, yeah shout-out. Yeah, yes. Uh, shout out to Sam Dog. He's kind of the one who made this happen. So, uh, Sam Dog, the inf- infamous 253, uh, props to you, man, for uh, setting this collaboration up. So, check out Sam Dog, the infamous 253's channel when you get a chance to. But, yeah, Sam Dog, thanks, man. You were the one who kind of yeah. brought us together right here yeah, on this little maybe collaboration. In, maybe, in the com- maybe in the coming weeks when we play each other, maybe you might want to collaborate with me, man. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure, man. Because, uh, well, you know, it's always gonna be twice a year at least, maybe more, depending on how postseason goes. Yeah, I, I do this NFC West roundtable with the AZ Sports fans, so we do it like on a weekly. Oh yeah, yeah. AZ Sports fans, great. Yeah, I've done some collabs with him too. It's been a long time, so uh, yeah, I got to reconnect with him, especially when we when our when our time comes up to face each other. So, hey, AZ Sports fan, he's great. Yeah, and I guess one of your – I don't know if he's one of your fan base, but he says Legion of Boo, I think, fell on Blair Wash. I don't know about a kick would fail it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of things failed when they signed Blair Wash, the Blair Wash project. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't connect that to the LOB. I would definitely connect that to the failure of 2017, the only year we didn't make the playoffs in, in that run from 2012 to 2020. Was really, I, I'd say, the kicker solely I was responsible for that season and thus missing the playoffs, going nine to seven and not making the playoffs. That definitely was Blair Walsh's fault. Oh, damn, those kickers, man. I remember those days when we had kicker issues. We used to have like an issue with, uh, I remember at one point, Acres was looking really good for us and then he started struggling and it started being our downfall a little bit here and there. Oh, and this Cardinals fan. The Cardinals rule, definitely go check him out. I think he wants to collaborate with you in the near future. Okay. I mean, he's a good dude. He's a he's All a right. I guess he's a, he's a professor also too. He does an analytics for his team, but he definitely likes to collaborate with you in the near future. All right, yeah, I, I always love to find guys to uh, collaborate with, especially from NFC West opponents, since we get to know each other, since we know our teams so well and face each other so often. So, very cool, man. Yeah, huge shout out to Rams House. He's a good Rams YouTuber. He definitely wants to collaborate with you too. So that should be the most interesting uh, division to collaborate with when you got the Rams and the Niners and Seahawks. I mean, this is an NFC West uh, vibe. So, you know, it's a good thing. 
Yeah. No, this this um it's gonna be interesting. I mean the NFC West always is pretty tight down. You granted you guys kind of you had the major injury bug last year, which kind of destroyed you guys. But I expect you guys are going to be much better this this season, uh, especially defensively. Offensively, I'm not sure. Obviously, with the quarterback situation, and you know, you guys have lost a few weapons here and there, so a little more question marks as far as who's going to step up and be the guys to really kind of take over on the offensive side of the ball. But defense wise, I mean, you got George Kittle, of course, still, and then that defense man is just uh, with Bosa and. Warner, like we talked about, um, I, I feel like you know this is sort of like I don't know, this is definitely the one of the best divisions in football, if not the best. I think you know and the Cardinals, you know, will they make that next step up? You know, will they they climb the next rung in the ladder? You know, it's always a big question. So the Rams, Niners, Seahawks, I, mean, I definitely I think these guys are going to be you know racing neck and neck down the stretch, and the question is going to be how how big, good will the Cardinals be? At least that's the way I see it. It's going to be tight yeah, that's a, that's and beat should, each other man. up. It's a, one of the best interesting division. But, hey, uh, since Sam Dog brought this up, I'd like to give a shout-out to Pale Time. He's a up-and-coming Rams YouTuber. Definitely uh, check this guy out. He's a, he's a new one that I've, I've been following for a while. So, yeah, Rams House, definitely a good dude. I've kind of seen him around a lot of times, and I'm definitely going to collaborate him in the near future. But, um, yeah, Norcam, you got – I mean, I've seen you many times before. I've known you for that, that what is it, that Seattle breakdown Super Bowl loss where you had that reaction. I, I was like saying, oh, you had to be that meme, that guy from the Super Bowl meme where you were like this. Yes. Yeah, this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, like that. No, yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. My most watched <laughs> I, video, I mean, man. My worst moment as a fan happens to be my most watched video. Go, go figure. People are sadistic that way. But uh, yeah, man, could have been could have been the greatest moment of all time. We we're this close. Well, more like that that clo- that close. But yeah, you know what's funny about this? Um, I haven't posted this video up, but uh, when I was at the Broncos preseason game on Saturday, uh, I actually ran into the guy who is right behind me to the to on screen to the left, my right shoulder. And I hadn't seen him since that game. You know, it's one of those things, you know, you're just around the people you're with and it's like, hey, I don't know you, but hugs, high fives, you know, and then and the ups and downs. And of course we lost. But um I hadn't seen that dude. But I knew his face because I'd seen him on my video so many times, you know, and you know, from watching, you know, having edited that and seen his face. So when I ran into him, I saw him. I was like, God, this guy looks really familiar. How do I know this guy? Then it just dawned on me. Oh my God, it's it's dude from behind me at Super Bowl 49. So we had a little reunion. What is it, yeah. six years later? Um, yeah. uh, you know, uh, right there in front of Century Link Field, just you know, talking about God that game in Arizona, man. The, what a what a what a game! What a what a what a time down in Glendale. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool to run into a guy that you know. I used to wonder, I wonder what that guy's, what are that guy's doing? Where, where's he from? You know, who is that dude back there? You know, and, and ran into him it was pretty cool. It's kind of like one of those moments where you just say, "Oh, I remember you." Oh yeah, all that stuff. You know how when you go to those reunions and you forget who they are, but then you just have that little flashback in your head, like, "Oh, I know who you are." Um, yeah, okay, yeah. I guess this guy's asking about Steve Large, and is he one of your best all-time Seattle players, or do you have a different opinion of it? Oh, for sure. Uh, Largent, he's kind of a, you know, if, if you're old school, remember the Seahawks from the glory days so when we weren't very good, uh, the 70s through the 80s. Uh, Steve Largent, synonymous, is, he's probably the most well-known Seahawks, you know, you say Jim Zorn, Dave Craig, but Steve Largent, probably the most uh, well-known legendary players, uh, had a great career. Uh, what I loved about the guy is that he was, um, he wasn't that big, wasn't that fast. Uh, but the guy was just really good at, at running routes and had great hands. No gloves, no stick them, no nothing. Just just plain old hands, right? Everybody got those gloves now. Those gloves, you ever worn those gloves? Those things are like super glue, man. You shouldn't be able to drop any balls when you have those gloves on because uh, when that thing hits the ball, that thing is just like it's like Velcro. But back in the day, man, rain or shine, just, just using these. If you catch the ball with that in a wet, slick ball, and that's what Steve Largen could do. So, so, yeah, he's kind of like underdog story, that little dude who just got the job done. But basically, he was just a great technician, great route and route runner and, and awesome hands. But for me, my favorite Seahawk of all time, I mean, there's obviously a few, but I think the one where I put it in this context of the one who I really miss watching um, is – Basically, the enforcer. And there were two enforcers. There was Kenny Easley, number 45 from the from back in the day. He was, uh, you know, safety. And then there's Camp Chancellor. They also called him the enforcer. The like, enforcer, too. But Camp Chancellor, I think I just miss that type of 
player. You know, you, you just love the players who can just knock guys out. And, you know, and you know, you know how much Cam Chancellor, you know, wreaked havoc on the 49ers, um, particularly on, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, 85, Vernon Davis. I oh, mean, yeah. that dude probably he had the nightmares. Light, not the not the multiple up. times, multiple. The most famous one was that pre- primetime game on the sideline. Everybody remembers that one where he just, you know, the ball was sort of floating up there. And pow! It was actually a legal hit because he didn't hit him with his head, but they flagged him anyway. But um, yeah, he, he clocked him on a few occasions, but um, it's kind of hard to do that now. I mean, I don't know if, if, if Cam Chancellor, if he would enter the league now and play by today's rules, he probably wouldn't get away with half the hits that he did when he was, you know, knocking guys around in the early 2010s to, you know, when his career was over. So I just missed that kind of hitting. You know, there's so much softness in the league because obviously the whole injury protection, quarterbacks and receivers now, again, defenseless receivers and all that stuff. So I know that they're trying to legislate you know, safety games, safer games, but man, I miss the days of just dudes getting their blocks knocked off. Cause you know, we're fans, right? We love the, we love the gladiator. We love the oh, hits. Kill guy, you know, the hits, but, uh, man. And man, you watch, you know, watch old football from the seventies and eighties, man, back when the rules were so much less protected. You see receivers go across the middle and they, if, the, if that quarterback hangs them out to dry with a deep pass over the middle of the safety or linebackers wait for him, it'd knock his head off and they would do, there's nothing they could do about it. Dude's just down on the floor with a concussion is totally legal. That just doesn't happen anymore. So, so Cam Chancellor, I think just because he represents the time, I think our, our last chapter of really hard hitting players, it's just, you don't see a lot of that now. So, okay, yeah, that's kind of a – I mean, Cam Chancellor was just a nightmare for us, man. Like, he was an enforcer. Like, this guy was just going to hit you, lay you out and uh, in a way. But um, as far as, like, your – okay, if you had to make a debate over the Seattle running back, Sean Alexander, Marshawn Lynch, who do you think was the better overall running back in your opinion? Hmm, that's a tough one because I always feel like Sean Alexander kind of gets the short end of the stick because people only remember how his career finished, which was – you know, kind of signed a contract and then kind of got injured. And, you know, he was always considered a soft runner because, like, if if in the backfield he was about to get buried by a bunch of linemen who got beat, uh, he would just sort of crumple and drop to the ground. And so Marshawn Lynch never crumpled, right? He would deliver the hit. Even if it's four yards deep in the backfield, he'd probably knock a couple of guys and stiff arm them and maybe get back to the, you know, for a net gain of one yard. But it would look like this awesome run because he's already hitting guys and stuff like that. So he was really productive. Sean Alexander was a guy that he had this nose for the touchdowns. And you got him, you got within like first and goal, just give it to Sean Alexander and he was going to score every time. So he was great. And I feel like, you know, it's kind of cool this week is they announced the Seahawks announced that they're going to put Mike Holmgren and Matt Hasselbeck in the ring of honor uh, this year, which is really cool. It's been a long time coming. So well-deserved. And I always feel like that, those guys got robbed, Sean Alexander for that matter. But that team in 2005, when we went to the Super Bowl and faced the Steelers, one of the worst Super Bowls ever played. Definitely one of the worst fish, uh, f- Super Bowl ever officiated. Seattle got robbed. Um, and they that team deserved a ring. Walter Jones should have a ring. Uh, Steve Hutchinson should have a ring. Robbie Toback, all those guys should have a ring. And it's a shame that they didn't get one. Um, Sean Alexander for that matter. But to go back to the point... Which is the better running back? I would have to say, if I, again, play that card, like if I could build a team right now and take two guys out of their prime and say, who's your running back? Choose one. Got to go with Marshawn Lynch, man. He's just, it's not just the way he runs, but it's just his presence and just, there was just an excitement of when he was on the field. You always felt like something exciting was going to happen. And he just represented, if, if Camp Chancellor was the enforcer on the defense, Marshawn Lynch is the, he's the guy who's going to inflict pain on the offensive side of the ball. And when it comes to just pure football, the love of hitting and what football's all about, can't beat Marshawn Lynch and what he brings and what he used to bring. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's just hard to tackle. Even with an okay line, he, he did prove himself. I can imagine if he just had that, that line that Sean Alexander had, I think he right. probably would have had far better numbers. But uh, this question to the Seattle fan, I guess, uh, do you think Jimmy will have an injury again? It's any, it's any given play. This guy's an injury waiting to happen, man. This he is like is. a, this is this is just an injury waiting to happen. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets injured. I'm just saying he he just can't stay healthy. I mean, it's anything possible. But uh, man, a lot of these questions. And then I guess Rams House says, what is one player that you hate to have to play in the NFL today? Which is that uh, one player you just hate to play against? And, and, and just Rams House, the Rams House. That you know that's a loaded question. 
You know, that's a loaded question because you have the one player who has been a pain in our ass and in a lot of teams' asses for that matter. Um, Aaron Donald, right? I mean, arguably one of the best defensive linemen of all time. I mean, the guy's, the guy's a beast. You got to pay attention to him. You got to double team him and he's hard to stop no matter what. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you knew the answer to that question was probably going to be that. But yeah, Aaron Donald, uh, I'll, I'll be happy when he's no longer playing or no longer in the NFC West or something. <laughs> so go to go to some other team. Have the have the Rams not pay him and let him go somewhere else. Go play in the AFC South or something for a while. But yeah, no, Aaron Donald the one thing that it's like you always gotta go, oh, playing the Rams. Damn. Aaron Donald. Just can't ignore him, you know. Yeah, and there's one last question here. Uh, what do you think about Patrick Willis? Mm. Um it was great, man. I, I I think about what was great about that uh, rivalry back in the 2012, 13, you know, time when we were really going at it, Seahawks and 49ers. You know, the Patrick Willis, he was one of those players that were part of that defense, you know, that was really great, you know, that really gave us fits, you know. And, um, you know, again, you guys are kind of having like that now with Fred Warner and these guys is kind of like, it, it's the, the rivalry is the NFC West is better when the Niners and the Seahawks are better when our good teams because it's just it's a better the games are better the division's better and it's more compelling football and that's what it was like Patrick Wilson was a great player and um you know isn't he is he the one who got the knee injury in the championship game no that or was, was that? Bowman it was Bowman. That was Bowman. Okay. But uh okay, okay. that was Bowman. That's right. That was nasty. Um but yeah, well it's though um yeah, I just I look at the tandem of those two, and it's just like man, it's kind of like KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner, right? It's sad that we don't have KJ Wright signed yet. I don't know if they will, but he's ready to, to be picked up. Um, but that's kind of what I, what I what I think of. I think of that, you know, Bowman and Willis is kind of like uh, you know KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner, just two great linebackers on a great pair of teams that were always battling each other. So, what's what's he what's he doing now? Is he did he retire a while ago? I don't even know what he's doing. Yeah, Willis has been retired. Bowman's retired. He hasn't been quite the same since that injury in that championship game. So what was your reaction when you saw, like, one of your fan base do some Skittles or something at uh, Bowman? No, it wasn't Skittles. Somebody was throwing popcorn on him and he's been carted off. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, one of those incidents. Yeah, uh, those guys were pricks. Uh, but the unfortunate thing about that is they make everybody else look bad. So you have – like one or two jerks in the stands who do something stupid. And then everybody thinks Seahawks fans are all do that. You know, I don't do that. I don't spit, throw stuff on anybody. I certainly wouldn't do it on an injured player, less a non-injured player. But that's the, that's the unfortunate thing. Just like anything, right? You take one bad apple and they make the whole ba- apple look bad. You know, look bad. So I remember hearing a lot of that from 49ers fans. Like, oh, Seahawks fans are this. And this. It's like, well... No, it was that guy, whoever that was, and he was. He shouldn't have been doing that. He should have been kicked out of stance for doing that, as far as I'm concerned. But that, to me, that doesn't reflect what our fan base, you know, is like. At least not personally, the ones I know. So, yeah, not a classic move. Happen. I think we're pretty classy fans, but that was not. I don't yeah, condemn that type of behavior. I wouldn't need it for my own fan base. But as far as like the one player on the off side of the ball, which offensive player was more concerning for you when you had to play against this guy? Rams house asked it. I, I oh on any team? Yeah, on offense that gave you gave your team a headache. Oh, like, oh, oh, any team, any team that on offense we hated to face. <sighs> Let me think about this. That's a good question. Mm. Have to, you know, it depends on what period we're looking at. There was a time when Colin Kaepernick, man, who is strange how that whole how he just vanished from the league. But that, back in the day, man, 2012, 2013, that dude was, you know, practically unstoppable. I remember that in you know, MC Championship game when he was galloping like a horse down the field. And, you know, uh, he, he, I was scared of him, man, at that time when he was at his peak because, you know, it's kind of like Russell Wilson, but he was even faster. Um, but who would be the guy? I guess I would probably say I was going to say Aaron Rodgers, but that would only be in Lambeau because he doesn't do well here. But if it's it's just like we're playing we're playing the Packers in Lambeau, and uh, maybe what I'd say is Lambeau Field, <laughs> Lambeau Field. We haven't won a game in Lambeau Field since the nineties. Okay, nineties. It's been twenty two years since we won a game at freaking Lambeau field and we're playing them again in Lambeau field. 
That sucks. How can you not win a game in 22 years? I mean, it makes no sense, right? You got all these different iterations of teams. Matt Hasselbeck and the we want the ball and we're going to score. Russell Wilson, multiple playoff appearances. It can't win there. That place is a house of horrors. Now, the house of horrors number one is Arizona. Now, we've won there, but often at the cost of losing players, as I mentioned multiple times already. So, Arizona is like second worst place to play, but Packers Lambo, man. I mean, there's uh, that place has got some kind of spell on us or something. Maybe this year we 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 uh, we undo that, but I'll go with that. How about that for an so answer? You, so you really believe in the curse in Arizona, right? The voodoo curse. A little bit of your players come injured and you guys win somehow. But no, man, I don't know about a, I don't know about a curse. I don't necessarily believe in superstitious hocus pocus voodoo curses, but I do think there's something about that place. I don't know what it is. Uh, but it's just not been good. <laughs> you know, it makes no sense. Both of those cases, but yeah, Arizona, not my, not my favorite place to, uh, to see my team go to. I'm always thinking in the back of my head, please, somebody don't get hurt in this, in this freaking game. Yeah. Please stay healthy. So <laughs> yeah, I guess this Rams fans asked you another question, a different question. From this, is a different, this is a different Rams fan, right? This is a yeah, different, different one, isn't it? It's a new yeah. one. I got a lot of Rams fans. He's a cool dude. Do you think Russell Wilson will stay with the Seahawks after this year, or is this friction? Oh, that's a big question. That's been well debated, obviously, since all the offseason drama that was created this, uh, this past year. I, uh, for me, I'm I'm always the hopeful, optimistic when it comes to Russell Wilson, the Seahawks. Uh, my dream and hope is that he's going to stay with the Seahawks, and he will be the one player that is the guy who rides off into the sunset with one team, and we go, "Oh, Russell, it's been a great fifteen or whatever twenty years of you playing with us. Thanks for everything, and thanks for the memories. We'll see you later." You know, that's that's the one player I'm hoping we have that sort of ending with i don't want to see it end next year because that would really suck because i know a lot of i know a lot of friends of mine who are predicting that that could happen next year or will happen next year i just don't i just don't see it i don't buy into it i certainly don't think after watching this pre these preseason games i definitely know what life without russell would look like and it's not a good place so russell wilson is uh, to me the best quarterback we've ever had and could have for the for a, a while to come. So I hope he's here to stay. I just don't know what's on his mind. Obviously, you know, him and his wife, they might have other plans that don't involve my view, my vision of him right off in the sunset in a Seahawk uniform. But if he's here to stay and he's happy with it, I, I would like to think he'll be here for a while. But, you know, we've never had a bad year. We've never, you know, we've had a year we didn't make the playoffs. But to have a team, to have a quarterback who under him, we've every year we've been we've had a winning record. The worst record we ever had was nine and seven in 2017 and didn't make the playoffs. We've made the playoffs every single year. You know, I think Seattle fans are spoiled because once you make the playoffs every year, then you become used to it. Like there you don't know what life is not making the playoffs, right? You're expected to make it. And then if you don't make the Super Bowl, it's a disappointing season. I mean, we, we were NFC champs last year, and yeah, we lost to the Rams in the first round, which sucked. Uh, at home too. Now, if we had fans in the stands, maybe that would have been different, but didn't happen. And so that ended on a bad note. But man, you know, it just, we still had a 12 4 record, won the division, yet it felt like a, a losing season because of just the way it ended. But it really wasn't that bad of a season given all that happened. So, following, you know, like, how can we have this kind of controversy after a 12 and 4 division winning team, right? Most teams would be like, you give me 12 and 4 and win the division. I'm not firing anybody, <laughs> you know, let's lock everybody up who was on that team. Cause that's pretty damn good. But, you know, I just think there's a lot of drama that gets created. A lot of it's because Seattle has been used to this and they want more people won't be happy. I talked talk to a lot of fans who said they won't be happy unless the Seahawks make it to the NFC championship, because anything below that would be a failure. It's like, that's you know how hard it is to make the playoffs every year. Look at the it 49ers. Is. You guys were, you know, almost won the Super Bowl twice have been in multiple NFC championships, but you had a lot of years in between that sucked. You guys were horrible for a while there. Back in the mid 2010s, you guys were awful. And it took a while to finally get back to where you're, where you're at now. Rams, same yeah. thing. Rams stunk for a while, but now they're good. Um, almost won a Super Bowl as well. You know, so the NFC West has been you know really good, but we've been consistently there. But again, people get spoiled and, you know, it's easy to take for granted, you know, having it good, but man, 
ask any of these other teams. I haven't sniffed the playoffs in like two decades <laughs> and see what see what they think about it. But yeah, so I'm long 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 answer to a short question. Uh, no, I think he'll be here this. I think he'll be here after this year. They'll they'll extend him and all will be forgotten. Yeah, it's just sometimes off season could be a little misunderstood and things can get fixed, you know, or maybe it just continues on, but nobody would ever know. So I'm pretty sure you got your prediction hype video coming up in your next video. So I don't want to spoil that question from this guy. So, uh, I yeah, think, he was uh, asking what my prediction, prediction, my answer would have, but definitely watch my music prediction video a week from Sunday. And that will tell everything you need to know. But, um, let me just say it's definitely not going to be a losing record. <laughs> That's not, we haven't had one in 10 years almost. So it's definitely going to be better than eight and nine. All right. Well, as much. long as you have Russell Wilson, you have a chance. There is any, it's any chance with Russell Wilson, you have miracle, you have your, your, your savior. So it, it, it's any way to save your season. You got to count on Russell Wilson at his best, you know? Yep. Yep. For sure. Yeah, as far as all of that, man, I appreciate you on the show. Maybe in the near yeah. future, if you have an opening for collaboration, we can do it on the 49ers versus Seahawks week. Just let me know. Uh, Sam Dog, just I'm I'm gonna have to give a shout out to Sam Dog because he made it happen. In all yeah. seriously, in all seriously, man, it, it's a great collaboration, man. You, you, I like how you set up your your thing your your thing, even though you, I'm not a Seattle fan, but it's pretty nice. Oh, you mean this whole this whole get up yeah. here? Yeah, I don't know how you did that. You did something like that. You made it look like like it's an actual thing, but it's pretty dope. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you, man. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm a production guy by trade, so I I take pride in trying to put quality work out there. So yeah, this is a this is a little technology all working together, but you know, it's it's uh, it's just a simple green screen and good lighting. That's the key, <laughs> and then a little oh, a little graphic work is, in the okay. background. But anybody could do it. You guys could do it too. <laughs> But uh, right, yeah, man. thank you. I appreciate it, man. But yeah, no, this has been fun. This has been fun. I definitely would look forward to doing a collab when we uh, when the time comes for our two teams to meet up and we can have a little bit better idea of what our teams actually are made of and who your quarterback is and who our cornerbacks are and all that good stuff. And hopefully we're uh, firing on all cylinders because I, I hope um, I want to see our teams going at it in full health. You know, there's nothing like going like, oh, well, we only lost you because we lost our, our linebacker and our defensive end and attack, you know, so then you have the, the, the old excuse issue. And I hate that. I just want to see two teams going full, full blast. Let's see which team wins. Yeah, for sure, man. That's the thing. We want to be at our best. So this will be an interesting one. We'll get a different understanding of what our team's record will be in the season. And if we're, if any of the players are healthy or not. So this will be a great debate. Oh uh, yeah. Sam dog, dude, you made it all happen, bro. It's been nope. long overdue. Uh, I must say. Yeah, thanks, Sam Dog, for uh, for making the connection here. And uh, CG, man, it's been great being on your show. I appreciate the the opportunity. No problem, man. I appreciate you, man. You're you're a big name. You're 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 just entertaining, man. I'll have to check out your hype video, man. I might just give you a little bit of a little hard time. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. No, no, you definitely check it out because I uh, well, you know, I I, I got to poke fun in all our rivals. So, uh, but I do it in a, I do it in a cool musical way. So, you know. It's uh, it's pretty unique. I got to say, it's a lot of work, but it's very unique. And I think uh, people will enjoy it this year. All right, man. So I'll definitely look forward to it, man. You bet. All right, man. So let me know, and then we'll definitely collaborate in, in the season. But overall, man, thank you for being on the show. Everybody else, we're about to end this stream. Nor Kim, I'll give you one last final saying so you can so you can get your All last right. saying and you can end the stream. I'll put you on the solo. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, again, thank you, uh, CG Ruthless Sports, for having me on here. Enjoy the collaboration. And if you guys want to check out more of my content, I do all stuff Seahawks, um, everything from you know, news updates to game reactions in the stadium or away. I'll do it in my studio. Music videos and comedy sketches. I just have a lot of fun with uh, Seahawks fans and Rivals fans and everything football as it pertains to the Seahawks. So check out my channel, Norb Cam on YouTube. Also Norb Cam on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, TikTok as well. So I hope you'll, you'll give me a follow, a like, a subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And uh, again, greatly appreciate it. Go Hawks. All right. Appreciate you, man. It's all good. Looking forward to it, man. Um, as far as everything else, the stream's about to end. 
CG Roof right. Sports is out and NorCam is out also. So All I right. guess we'll have the opposite in saying you'll probably say go Hawks and I'll say go Niners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go Hawks, baby. Go Niners. <laughs>